Fail. Action. <laughs> hey, Clint. How you going there, yeah. Dev? Yeah, all good to you. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, topic. Uh, that so the title of this uh, call could be defending your or our constitution. And the question is, what what would be meant by that? I'll I'll just give a summary from from my side, right? A couple of sentences on on what the whole thing would be about, and then we can maybe go into more detail. Yep. <clears throat> so so why would I want to defend our constitution? Defending our constitution for me means defending the the common sense faculties and attributes that we have that allow us to determine what the objective natural world is. My feeling is that you know we we've been ripped of the 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 knowledge of our constitution and how we perceive things, right? Of human nature in general. Yep. Um, education has replaced that with a lot of fantastic ideas. Uh, nobody trusts their own senses to to and, and uh, you know has given away their power of authority to to people with white coats and degrees after their names. Yeah. Yep. And as far as I'm concerned, we need to defend our own constitution, i.e., believe in our common senses, Glenn, right? And and I think that you know giving people the knowledge is a kind of power source, right? To 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 get back courage, right? So that you know you can defend your constitution against sophistry, against pseudoscience. Um, so that, if you like, is the kind of overall gist of what I mean by defending your constitution. Yep. Um, it, it goes back to our previous discussions uh, about oh, uh, an inquiry into the human mind by um, Reed and, and the battle he had with Hume and others, where they were trying to bring, well, well, where they did, where they succeeded in creating the, um, the world of ideas that we live in now, rather than the world of um, direct realism. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that that whole philosophical ideology is basic. I mean, ideology is for me idealism. <clears throat> and I wouldn't call direct realism an ideology because no. it's exactly the opposite of that. Yeah. Right. It has nothing to do with mental objects. It's about discerning the difference between mental objects and ideas and what is true facts and true knowledge. Right. Yeah. Um, now there is there is a whole bunch of stuff in direct realism that that you have to know right like what is a natural belief you know why do we come to believe the things that we believe and why are these things innate and original and direct and immediate right that you know we we don't need to to think about them we don't need to rationalize about certain things that is if you like direct real knowledge that we have of the world yeah yeah. Um, as opposed to ideologic fantasies, right? So, so direct, direct realism is about knowing that you have to actually open the door before you can go through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so maybe if we just, you know, step right back after that kind of introduction about what it is we're going to talk about, then, you know, maybe one thing is this definition of the word constitution, right? What does constitution, first of all, mean? Now, I'm being a little bit um, uh, tongue in cheek and maybe even a bit provocative by using the word constitution, because most people would would associate that with, for example, the United States Constitution. Yeah. Right. And, and defending the foundational principles of that state of government. Um, I'm using it in a wider sense in that I want to defend the foundational principles of human nature. Glenn, right. Rather than the constitutional setup of some government uh, system. Yeah. Yeah, what constitutes a human? Yeah, so so what are the constituent parts that we are made up of, right? Yep. What what constitutes human nature? So not just the the, the body part of what it is we are, yep. like our sense organs, like an eyeball and you know tongues and ears. Um, that you could call that part of your constitution. You could also call the makeup of your body from a you know overall physiological standpoint, right? Whether it's the chemistry or the biology that you have also is a constituent part of you yeah? yeah and then there's the question as to how that relates to what we call the mind right so how we go about thinking um, and where exactly that border is between mind and body 
So when we're talking about our constitution, we're kind of referring to all these bits and pieces. The constituents, the mind and the body, are yeah. constituents of a, yeah. of a human being. Yeah. So so even with this, this tongue-in-cheek, and I do want to say just one thing about that when I say tongue-in-cheek, I see a lot of people um, in America waking up to the fact that we're being lied to, right? And obviously there can be for a lot of people a focus on on what they're being lied about, right? Um, you know, we could talk about election integrity and lots of other things, but this idea that people lie to us is known to us, right? It's human nature. In fact, I would go so far as to say is that we know when we're being lied to because we lie ourselves. We recognize lies, right? Because everybody's everybody's culpable, right? Like we all do it. I don't yeah. lie. I don't lie. <laughs> yeah. I I was even thinking about this in the context of a baby. You could try and make the you could try and make the case that a baby is completely innocent and doesn't lie. But if I think about the fact that a baby screams, right? And the scream that it gets off sounds as if bloody murder's happening, right? But the scream is really just there to get the attention of the mother so that I can get another suck of milk. Oh. Then that's already nearly deceitful. Well, I don't think it's willfully deceitful, but I nature has given us never nature has given us that proclivity, right? That tendency to to do certain things to, to stay alive, right? I'm, I'm maybe slightly over the top, but I think you're being a bit harsh there. <laughs> the, the baby just doesn't know how to communicate exactly. So the, the communication is, I need something. How do I communicate that I need something? Um, I've got, I've but it's a primal scream, Glenn, that sends shivers down the back of every mother, right? <laughs> and it doesn't matter whether it's just hungry or whether it's, you know. No, it, it, but, so I'm, 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 what I'm making the point is that, that nature has given babies that, let's say, that uh, proclivity, that the capability as well, that faculty, right, to be able to make those noises to get attention. And in a way, it's, I wouldn't call it deceitful, willfully deceitful, but I think you know what I mean, that it's nearly a kind of art of lying, right, that, that we come with, right? You know? Uh, Am I being too harsh on us? <laughs> I, I can under, I understand what you're saying. I'm just not sure that I agree that it's um, that it is actually lying. Okay, let, let, let's skip over it. The, the point I was trying to make was that um, <clears throat> people lie to us. We know that people lie to us, and and we're all capable of doing it ourselves. So it's easy for us to actually spot it if we're truthful with ourselves, right? Yeah. If we're not truthful with ourselves, we tend to skip over it. Yeah. Um. In the case of the American, you know, problems that they have over there in their politics, what I'd like to do by opening this conversation about constitution is to awaken some of the people over there to the wider picture, to the bigger picture, to the bigger problem, right? Which is that we're not just being lied to about our government system, right? They're not trying to to change the interpretation of the the the, the constitution over there. These progressives by reinterpreting how the const are, 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 are trying to argue that the constitution needs to be interpreted differently because we're in modern times against the people who want to, you know, how should I say, defend the original constitutional um, ideas set out by the founding fathers, right? Yep. What I'm trying to say is that, okay, that's one lie that we've been now told, right? We can see that there's corruption happening there, but open your eyes to the bigger corruption because this idea of a constitution is based on human nature. Even what the founding fathers did in America was very much rooted in Scottish common sense realism, right? Yep. So the people that set up the constitution of the United States, you know, had a bigger, wider picture in mind, right? Um, when they're talking about the constitution, if you ask me, right? At least the philosophical underpinnings of it are obvious to me, a much wider foundational scope than just looking at a system of government. Right, that's what I'm trying to point out. Well, there's even mention by some of those founding fathers of people like Reed and the other uh, Scottish uh, philosophers at the time. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, just just, just to tie that in, so in, in a way, this you could look at this video as a little bit of clickbait, right, to 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 our American cousins to engage in a wider conversation about defending a bigger constitution 
than just the American system of government, right? And, yeah. and, and I think if you look on it that way, you'll see that there are bigger lies being told to us, right, about the shape of the world and where we live than just the, the government lies that we're, we're used to. Not just where we live, but who we are. Yeah. And, and what we are. When you, talk, yeah. when you start talking about the constituents of a human being or our constitution, you're talking, about, the deceit goes as far as actually lying to us about who and what we are. Exactly. The education and, system has been set up to mould us into a particular type of creature that's got nothing to do with what I believe we were created to be. No, oh, well, let's let's step aside from the, uh, uh, creation, absolutely. But let, let's just go back on to the topic of um, uh, how the how the hell. So, if the, if this is bigger lie being told, and I mean the American Constitution talks about you know people being equal, you know, right? You know, we the people, and we're all equal, and we all have inalienable rights, right? Yeah. Um, now, if I just step aside, take away this whole idea of the system of government and just look at that, then, then yes, we are all equal in a certain sense, right? And that we share the same common sense abilities. We, we all have the same manners and practices that we need and live life to, to fulfill and function, right? Yeah. Nobody's any different. We share a whole bunch of sense organs, right? Um, you know, some people might have better sight than others, but hey, we, we've still got the same building blocks, Right, eyeballs and noses and ears and the rest of it, yeah. and and we all have a bunch of natural beliefs that we can't shake off that are innate to us, right? Right, that, that there's no way you can actually just kind of you know forget them, right? We are, I put it this way: these natural beliefs for me are things that I do not need to make any inference, right? I don't need to go through a, a rational steps of of propositions and make inferences. I just know these things to be true, and there's no way I can actually prove them, right? Okay, example. Um, well, the, the, uh, an example would be that um, if two things are equal to one thing, then I can't prove to you that these two original things are equal. I couldn't demonstrate that to you. I can only take it as a kind of axiomatic, innate principle that I know to be true, but I couldn't demonstrate or prove. Right. Right. Yep. As opposed to, you know, if you think in mathematical terms, you would you would make a whole bunch of axioms. And then from these axioms, you would you would say, OK, I've got a theory and you would use propositions to take these axioms and prove the theory with it. But to prove the axioms is very difficult. Right. You, ha you have to take these axioms as being fundamentally true. And I think that's the same as as what our Constitution forces us to do. We have to take certain things for granted, right, in lived life, and there's, it's preposterous to try and to try and demonstrate these things. They are just known to us, Glenn, right, right, and there's there's no way to to, to strip it. You know, I'll take an example. If I walk out to, to, tomorrow and and there's a rock in my way, I am not going to try and walk through that rock, even if the physicists tell me there's more empty space in that rock than there is real stuff right yeah. i i am automatically going to step over the rock i'm going to walk around the rock right yeah i am not you know if, if if i thought i could walk through that rock then people would say there's something wrong with me i'm not functioning in all cylinders right yeah. there's something you know i'm i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm a pork pie short of a picnic right <laughs> you know so so what i'm trying to say is that these innate things, these these parts of our constitution are things that we can fundamentally say we know them to be true. We can defend them, right? Because, you know, even if people ask to uh, ask us to prove them or to demonstrate them and we say we can't, right? We just have to point to the fact that, hey, this is life. You can't ignore it, right? You, you know what I'm trying to say? I think so. Would, would um would the example of um, a transgender person have anything to do with it? The fact is, we know that <laughs> we, we we know that there's a biological male and a biological female. They're trying to tell us that no, that's not true. Um, well, they've 
Yeah, I mean, they've kind of introduced a second term called gender, right? Or gender fluidity that they're trying to, I don't know, you know, combine with sex, right? And as far as I'm concerned, they're two different things, right? Sex is definitely the biological sex. There only are two. And gender fluidity is this kind of ideological concept that you can be who you want to be, right? You can choose your gender, right? But I was, it's, it's got nothing to do with the objective facts, right? Of chromosomes and yeah, but stuff. That's what I mean. so. It's not about the constitution it's not about direct reality the fact is there are only two there are only biological males and biological females i don't care how yeah. many genders you might want to make up they are fairy stories they are not i agree i agree so they're they're they, they, they would belong to idealism or to an ideology i would say rather than to a direct realist view which is that there are two sexes and if somebody wants to to think that he's an Apache helicopter, right, or made of glass, then generally speaking, you would say, poor fellow, right, let's give him comfort, solace, and, and help him, because yeah. he's not firing. His natural proclivities are, are are in some way fucked, right? That That's generally what, you know, the, the view that I would have <laughs> of, of the situation. Actually, I'm starting to wish I hadn't mentioned that. We'll probably get cancelled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It wasn't politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, you know, again, I mean, we've talked about this and, you know, on, on Beyond the Imaginary Curve or, or here ourselves, Dale, uh, uh, Glenn, that um, sticking to objective facts and reality is the thing that we, that, that we know, right? And that we can defend against, right? So, for example, if somebody was to tell me, I'm going to drop a baby from a 10 story building right and my hypothesis is the baby's going to bounce in the ground and then walk up and and go away right stand up and and be fine then then i would generally say to him well that goes against all the facts of reality that i know and lived life so that's a hypothesis for me that's absurd right yep. and and that's a good place to be because if if you're on the side of facts then it's easy for you to deny any hypothesis that comes with these absurd kind of claims yeah yeah. Um, and the other way around, so being on the side of a science science ideology that says I can come with any hypothesis that even goes against natural facts, and you have to believe me because I've got a whole bunch of people on my side who believe me, right? That that's not really scientific, right? That's that's a kind of authoritative gaslighting, right? Yeah. Of of people's common sense and. And that's what I'm saying in this video, right? We need to defend our constitution against such attacks. Yeah. Well, that's the, the world we live in at the moment, and we do need to defend against it. I mean, yep. it, it seems to have the ascendancy at the moment, uh, I, which to me is an absurdity in itself. I just don't understand how the world can be so silly. I can't, Absolutely. I, I just can't understand the stupidity. Uh, it's like talking about coronavirus. I was talking to my wife the other day, and as I said to her, I'm way more afraid of catching stupidity than I am of catching coronavirus. <laughs> I definitely think stupidity has caught on. <laughs> it seems that way to me. It, it's just, it, it's, it's got to the, the point of being absurd and ridiculous. And, and, and that's why we need to talk about our actual constitution, the way that we really are, but the truth, you know, it comes down to just the truth, really, doesn't it? Well, and I think that would be my other thing, yeah, be a patriot to the truth. I mean, that's the only thing we should all be beholden to, if you ask me, yeah. Um, you know, obviously, lots of people will say, but the truth is this and the truth is that, but what we can all agree on as part of our common sense and natural beliefs right, without any other language, right, so I don't need words, you know, if, if I'm looking, you know, then, you know, like our, the natural language that we have, right, the, the ability to demonstrate things to each other without opening our mouths, right, whether it's in the way of, of, of dancing or motion, whether it's in the way of painting or, or music, right, um, you know, so, so, so those kind of things, right, is, is a natural language where we need absolutely no words, right, Yep. And, you know, I think the knowledge that you can get in there, I've said, I mean, I said at the beginning, it's, it's, a, it's a power source to, to go against the fear that people have. So everybody at the moment has a fear to stand up and tell the truth. 
And and why is that? Is it because they, they don't have, how should I say, a foundation on which to stand, right? To be able to go against people, right? These authoritative figures. And and that's why, you know, I'm, you know, as far as I'm concerned and what we're doing, Glenn, here is hammering home that that constitution that we have is a super foundational principle to fight against all that nonsense, yeah? Yeah. Um, and, and to deny it, yeah, stick by it, and that gives you that gives you the courage, right? Knowing knowing the stuff that that knowing how you function, knowing the the facts about nature and the facts about human nature, um, gives you a, a, a gives you the courage to be able to stand up to people, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I'd like to reinstill by by provoking this conversation. It's sadly lacking at the moment. You can see, well, just the way that the cancel culture is actually working. That, that people are people are kowtowing to um, people that are making absurd claims against them. But, uh, corporations, you can see, folding and, and changing their their internal structure, um, being forced into um, diversity hiring rather than merit. To, you know, hiring by merit. They're hiring by diversity. I mean, that that's another another case for stupidity it doesn't make any sense why the, yep. i don't understand why they're doing it if there's what yeah I, I don't have any fear at the moment i have absolute consternation i just don't understand what's happening yep Boy, yeah i mean i do understand what's happening i don't understand why it's happening well, I mean, what was that? These clever phrases like, you know, the, the, the bad things happen because good people don't stand up and do something about it. Yeah. And there's a lot of truth in that. Right. And the question then becomes, well, why don't people stand up? Is it because they're, you know, nervous because they don't have the knowledge? They, they don't know how to 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 argue right from 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 facts. Yeah. Right. Um, and as I say, that's why it's, it's hugely important. I think that people get and uh, get to grasp with. You know, even even the stuff you know, like heliocentric, you know, globe gobblers, they, they don't know half of the theory they're spouting as opposed to people opposed. Because we've all looked at that stuff and 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 went into detail. We know more about it than they do, right? Yeah. And that allows us to stand, you know, on on solid ground and oppose them. And I think it's the same now for human nature because we're always, you know, how should I say? Being steamrolled with emotional appeals to fallacy, nearly everywhere you look, it's all emotional, subjective bullshit, right? Yep. So, so you know, standing back on objective facts and knowing your human nature and how your mind works or how perception works just allows you to push back and all that. That's why it's hugely important. Well, I think one of the reasons they're getting away with that sort of stuff that they're able to do that sort of manipulation to people at the moment really does stem to the taking over and manipulation of the education system worldwide. I, I, I truly believe it's gone worldwide. Um, I've been reading a bit of John Taylor Gatto and his explanation of what's happened to the American education system, I can see happening here in Australia. I can see it happening all over the world. And it's basically been the extension of childhood and it's the extension of childhood into, well, People of people of the, in their fifties are still acting like yeah. children. Yeah, keeping people infantile, basically, right, and and devoid of logic and reason and and, and thoughtfulness, right, yeah. and okay. just you know following one emotional baggage after another. That yeah. seems to be what the education system's about. And right. being afraid to think about things. So many times you try to have a sensible discussion with people, and they'll they might come into the conversation for five minutes or not even five minutes a minute two minutes and then straight away it's as though they've just got really tired or they just don't want to hear any more and some people even say look no no it's just too hard I, I i don't want to think about that i don't need to think about that it's, you know and i i hear that sort of thing so often I think that's the thing they've managed to do in the education, no doubt about it. Although we are, you know, responsible ourselves for for, for doing something about it. But I, I totally I totally agree with you that education has robbed people of the the, the explore and the, the exploration and the inquiry, right? So people and people are weary to start an argument against, you know, the accepted line because we just get continuously gaslighted and intimidated and peer pressured if we do, right? 
Yep. But still, it, it has to stop. People need to defend what they know, right? Their natural beliefs, their proclivities, their common sense, their, you know, exactly, yeah, your constitution. You need to defend it, otherwise we're all going to go under. <laughs> if, no. I saw a, um, a, a little bit of, in, I don't know, it might have been in the, one of the ghetto books um, where he mentions, or the author mentions, um, an, a questionnaire that was given to 500 children that had been taken out of a working situation and put into schools and they had been asked uh, are they happy with it? And over 400 of them said, no, they'd rather go back to work rather mm. than stay at school. And this is back in the 18, late 1800s. Nope. When they were just starting to take the kids out of the factories. Yeah, so I, I just hope people will get a bit more courage. Have I be, you know, yeah. stand up for the truth. And I think the first part of that is, is having a having a knowledge Right, you know, because if you're ignorant, then then you're obviously going to be in t timid, right? Yeah. When it comes to you know going against people's you know sophistry and rhetoric, and I think you know that's uh, yeah where people still need to work at it. Yeah, well, I, I see it as actually a, a severe attack upon any idea of a constitution, a a, a, a human constitution. It's, yep. I think. I think they're well aware of it. I think the people that are instigating all these change changes, the people that are putting these change agents in place, um, the long march through our institutions has definitely been happening. And part of that is about destroying the, the obviously innate magic qualities of human beings. I mean, and I don't mean magic in a, a supernatural way, I mean, magic in astounding yep yep the human constitution itself is absolutely amazing and yet yep yet people know bugger all about it yeah and i mean the, the thing is it's this it's the thing the constitution keeps us alive every day right every minute <laughs> every working day and yet we're supposed to suspend belief and 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 how should I say agreement on these things when it comes to the stories they tell us about outer space or bendy water or any of those things. And that's what's so absurd about it, right? Yep. That, you know, we need to just, you know, stand fast and, and what we know to be true and, and the foundational principles of our own knowledge. So, yeah, I agree. I think we should just stop it there, Glenn. Keep it short and sweet. Okay, mate. It's been good chatting with you about it again. Yep, same here. A nice Sunday morning chat. Yep. Well, Sunday afternoon. Sunday evening. <laughs> Actually, no, it's Monday morning for me at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no. Are I'm you doing... still recording or? Yeah, I'm still recording. I'm just hoping other people oh, okay. enjoy this as much as we do. I'll stop the recording. Yeah. I'll stop it now. Yeah, I hope it's been a help for folks. Yep.